And another man worth sticking around for, you know, we're just talking to OCU Manura. He's become NFL UK royalty, but he hasn't got the years on the tyres that this man has as one of our very favourites. Delighted to welcome on Sky Sports and coach at various levels of football, Jeff Reinbold. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Will, man. It's great to be back with you. It's kind of strange to, talking about Super Bowl and not being there with you. With everything that's different this year, I want to ask you from a coaching perspective. And this is, I'm going to tell a story that I tell almost every year. And I know you get embarrassed and laugh about it every time. But I think it was in, it may have been in Minnesota. It may have even been in, in Houston the year before that. And we were there on media night and there was all the madness going on in the basketball arena. I think it was a hockey arena that year, actually. Yeah. And we were in there and there was players flying around and everyone's running around. And unfortunately, the special teams guys don't get the love that they deserve. And they tended to be off to the side with not many people approaching them for a one on one. And I went over there looking for kind of someone to chat to. And I found Jeff not in interview mode, but in full on coaching mode, talking to these guys like it was, you know, 20 minutes before kickoff, giving them this big like, this is your moment. Don't let this week pass you by. Really embrace it. Show that you can be a key. And like, I was just like, Jeff, this is it's beautiful to watch you do your thing. No, it was so much fun because, you know, it's interesting. I had Steve Tasker on my little show last night and Steve is a, you know, nomination nominee to the National Football League Hall of Fame as a special teams player. Now that's incredible. And, you know, there's kind of a brotherhood of, you know, guys that work in that arena because it's a thankless job. It's a job that nobody really, unless you really understand and know football deeply, you, you kind of can overlook it really quickly, but you find out in the games that, and I think this game is going to be the same way. Uh, one, one area where the Chiefs have a dis definitive advantage is in the kicking game. And I think that may end up being Tampa's undoing because the Chiefs will make a big play in, in special teams. I, I wonder, for, uh, the reason I was asking, though, and make, telling that story is from a coaching perspective, this is a very different week this week because yeah. they're not there. They've not got the media in their faces constantly. They're not, you know, out of the city in a hotel trying to find a way to fill their time and, and everything that goes along with that. If you're a coach, are you relishing the fact that this is a much more normal game week to a normal Super Bowl week? Or does it maybe take away from that excitement a bit? Well, I don't, you know, again, for Kansas City, they were there last year. So it, about the, the hype and the week and all that, they've experienced that one time. Now, they're on a business trip now. This is strictly a business trip. And, and you know, I think, well, if you ask players, and, and my experience with in 30 years of professional football with players is one thing players appreciate is routine. They like to have things the same way day after day. They like to sleep in their own bed. They like to, you know, that is important to them. And so you, you remember what it's like, just the absolute sheer pandemonium of the hype and the every day, the media. And, you know, as me, it, I consider myself half media and you go in there and that the players have heard the same question you know, 50 times. And there comes a point where you, they start to roll their eyes a little bit with the whole thing. And it's just like, can we get to the game, please? I think this week, Kansas City, that's another advantage Kansas City is going to have. They're going to be in their own facility, their own beds, their own routine until Friday when they go into Tampa. That's really unusual. First time it's ever been done that way. And then for Tampa, they get to be at home for the first time, everything involved with that. And we're going to be asking some of the players about what it's exactly that a little bit later on today, what it's been like to actually, you know, get to be in your own bed. Predominantly, we're talking about defense today. We've been speaking with Osu Manura and talking to him about his experiences at Super Bowl mm -hmm. 42 and again at 46. And that phenomenal defensive line they had got pressure on Tom Brady, restricted him in terms of the points on both occasions. He seems to think, and I, I put forward to him about JPP and that Bucks defensive line, but he's saying to me, if you think Andy Reid hasn't got something schemed up to deal with the fact that they're missing their starting tackles, then, then you're mad. So are we overrating that idea that Kansas City are going to be missing players on the offensive line, considering how good that Bucks defense have been? Well, I don't think we're over, you know, underestimating the the fact that when you lose two starters like Kansas City's done and two good players I mean Fisher's a number one draft choice and and so you, you you replace that with Mike Remmers and Andrew Wiley those are those are backups those are career backups Remmers we've seen Remmers in the Super Bowl before if you remember when he was the starting right tackle for Carolina the first pass rush of the game 
you know, Vaughn Miller runs right past him, hits, hits Cam, ball comes out, it's laying in the end zone, they get a touchdown, and the game was really, that was the turning point in the game, was about the fifth play of the game. So I, I think that, you know, I, I really believe O.C.'s right in that Andy will have some stuff schemed up to move the pocket to help the quarterback. But when you watch them, Will, they're not a team that likes to keep an extra tight end in or chip with their back. or one. They want to get guys out in the routes. Now, I think they'll do that as long as they can hold up. But if JPP and Shaq Barrett start to create challenges for them, obviously Andy will have some answers. He's the best there's ever been off of a bye. And this is really like a bye week for him. And you look at his rec- record off a of bye, it's, it's incredible. And you look at the other side of it, Todd Bowles, who I think a lot of people think of his time in New York and as a head coach and the difficulties he had there. But it would be to ignore what a brilliant defensive coordinator he has been. And I suspect there'll be pretty decent scheming on the other side. And I, I think when you've got those incredibly fast linebackers and rookies making impact like Antoine Winfield Jr., mm-hmm. you've got guys in there, playmakers that you know you can throw stuff at and they will make plays. Yeah, I think, you know, when I think about this game, there's a little package and you don't see him do it very much, but watch for it in the Super Bowl where he'll take in passing situations, he'll take out one of his big guys. Usually it's Vita Vea will come out and he'll put either another linebacker in or another DB in because they play nickel almost all the time, you know, with with four down guys and two uh, two linebackers. But that I think is a real plus for them because it gets more speed on the field because the problem matching up with Kansas city, and this happened to them in the first game that they played, they just couldn't match Kansas city speed across the board. So by taking one of those big guys out and, and let's be honest, Vita Vea is an average pass rusher, but you have such great blitzers in David and, you know, Devin White, those guys are like, they are great pass rushers as linebackers. And that way you get more speed on the field. And I think you got a better chance of matching up. The big key to me is whether Carlton Davis can play better than he played the last time. Cause last, mm-hmm. the last time they played, I'm telling you, Tyreek Hill just scorched him. And unfortunately it's 11 on 11. So you can't be doubling Kelsey, doubling Hill, bringing a blitz. You just can't do it all. Well, Against Kansas not- City, you almost need an extra man on the field. No, you're exactly right, Will. It's like, you you know, the only thing that's missing with their wide receiver group and being a track team is a baton because I'm telling you, they are that fast. They, you look at it, think, all right, so what, what do you say as a coach, you know, in, in, in football parlance, 4-4 four, four in the 40-yard dash is considered really fast, mm-hmm. okay? Now, Kansas City can run three guys at you in Sammy Watkins, Tyree Kill. <laughs> excuse me and and mccall hardman and every single one of those guys runs four three five or faster now you just can't match up with that speed and then oh and then they've got that other guy who's six five 240 pounds and runs you know runs four six and is a receiver really in a tight end's body in travis kelsey so you know top bowl's got his work cut out for him they're gonna have to play really really well you hit it on i think two on it on a key is Whitehead and he's got to play well at safety, you know, coming off of that shoulder and, you know, the young kid who I think is going to be one of the really, really, really good players in this league in the future. um, Antoine Winfield is those are those guys have to play well against Kelsey. Tyron Matthew is sensational. You know what? I've known that kid will since he was a, junior in high school at St. Augs in New Orleans. I'll tell you the first story about Tyron Matthew. I go in there and the defensive coordinator at St. Augs had played for me in pro football. And he said, he said, Jeff, we got a kid and nobody in the SEC has offered him uh, because they think he's too small, but I think he can really play. And so he brings Tyran in and Tyran is not much bigger than me. I mean, he's really not very big at all. And you, you know, this tape wasn't very good. And I took the tape back and I, and I showed it to our guys and our DB coach said at the time said, nah, he, he's too small. He, he can't play. Right. Well, lo and behold, he, he gets offered late by LSU and goes to LSU and then has the career that he's had, but he's the same guy. When you watch him play, He's the same guy that I saw as a junior at high school, St. Augs in New Orleans, just 
all over the field, plays like he, you know, he, he plays like you want a kid to play, like he totally enjoys football. He loves football. He loves the, you know, he loves the competition. He loves the contact. He loves the, the mental part of it. I mean, he's just a fun, fun guy to watch. And a guy that's really, in a lot of ways, you know, he was headed down the wrong path when he was in college. And he owes an awful lot to Bruce Arians because Bruce Arians and Patrick Peterson were really the ones that vouched for him to draft him and, and you know, put him on the course that he's on. And I, I think it's kind of, you know, it's really kind of interesting now to see them compete against one another on the field. I don't know if you saw it, NFL Network put Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes on air together on Monday night. And Tom Brady talked about that seven, eight step drop back for the Tyreek Hill pass, which <laughs> kind of turned around the Super Bowl for Kansas City last year. And there was an air of jealousy. He was like, yeah, I can't do that. There's no, I like, I literally can't do what you've done there. Well, he is not the Lone Ranger there because there ain't nobody that can do like he can. I mean, there's some guys with elite arm talent in the league. Josh Allen's got elite arm talent, you know, uh, Matthew Stafford's got elite arm talent, but you watch, the more you watch tape on Patrick Mahomes, the things he's able to do. And, you know, in coaching terms, you always talk about a, a quarterback's foot platforms, how he throws the ball, where his feet are when he throws the ball. And, you know, everybody will tell you, you throw from your feet up, but he can do it with one foot off the ground with his feet pointing the wrong way. I mean, I'm waiting for the day. Throwing with his he, left hand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I'm waiting. The only one he hasn't broken out yet is I want to see him throw one behind his back and complete it. Now, if he does that, then I'm going to say that. Full repertoire. Um, which way do you think it goes on Sunday? You know, I, I, I said this last March. Until somebody proves to me different, they are the best. Kansas City is the most balanced team in the National Football League. You know, I mean, think about it. They really just gave up and and the last game right they finished the season 14 and 2 but really really you know the only game they really lost was the raider game and that's you think about it like over two years they've lost less than five games that's incredible so i think that they're the better team i think it's going to be a great football game because tampa won't go away easy and you know this two coaches going to play like Nothing's going to be left on the call sheet because these guys, these guys are aggressive play callers. So it's going to be a great game to watch, but I think Kansas City will win.